God's about to cause you to go from emptiness. God's about you to go, go from barren to overflow. Is there anybody in here that know everybody's not going to like it when you get blessed? Because some folk are going to still be stuck in what they were in yesterday. But you better understand in this season, you're about to get everything that God says is yours. I don't care what they say on the job. I don't care how it looks in the courtroom. God says this is a season that I'm about to blow up in the church life. And see, this is a season where God says, you better look to what I'm telling you to do. You better look in this season when I tell you to build. Don't look at who show up. He's, I was wondering why he said that the other day. He said, don't you worry about how the crowd looks. You better look at the land. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm looking at where I'm going. I'm not looking at who's with me now. Because watch this other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them I must bring also. Is there anybody here that know that God got your blessing in transit? Tell your neighbor, God has my blessing in transit. If you would just bear with me with these scriptures, it's the word of the Lord, Isaiah 40, chapter number 18, King James Version of the Bible. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? The workman method a grave and image, and the goldsmith spread it out with gold, cast the civil chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation choseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that he should not shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told to you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sit upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretch out the heavens as curtains, and spread them out as tents to dwell in. That bringeth the prince, princes to nothing, and maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me, or shall I be equal, said the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high. Behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one they faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Listen to the question Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faineth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, bless us today through your word. It's me. I ask that you would cause me to decrease that you may increase. I pray that, God, you would give me the anointing to make this uh, message uh, uh, simple for preaching and uh, teaching. We pray that you would put these people in position to receive the word on good ground. If there's any sick among us, you heal, you deliver, and you set free. We bless you for it now in the name of Jesus for miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you for the testimonies and the reports that we'll receive because this word has gone forth. Thank you that the grass withered, the flowers fade away, that your word stands forever. Thank you that your word is going to send, be sent out to accomplish what it was sent out to do. And it won't return unto you void. In Jesus' name we pray. The people of the Lord said yes, and it is so. Before you take your seat, the text says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? If I had to take that old English and apply it to what it means to us today, just look at somebody and say, don't you know, haven't you heard? Come on, that was the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody else and tell them, say, don't you know, haven't you heard? 
you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So he asked the prophet, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, are you going to help me preach today? The Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. I believe, my brothers and sisters, you need to hear this message on today. That human strength will never be adequate for facing all of life's challenges and difficulties. In my class the other day, I had to talk about how life brings about complexities and circumstances. If you've lived any length of time, you deal with complexities and you deal with circumstances. And a lot of times you find yourself doing the right thing and bad end up happening. I'm no, I don't have a real church today, but the reality of it is I'll just raise my hand. I found myself trying to make the right decision and somehow or another, even in my own pursuit of doing the right, complexities and circumstances didn't turn in my favor. Do I have a church in here to know that when you went in, you went in with the right mindset, you went in with the right desire, but things didn't turn out the way that you wanted them to do because there's life challenges and there's life difficulties. And so, uh, Pastor Grady, no matter who you are, how much uh, power you may have, you will always encounter situations in life that you just can't manage by yourself. And so, in our text, Lady Futrell, the prophet Isaiah gives us a special promise of God's strength during the time of our weakness. I'm going to say it again. He's given, he's given us a, 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 the reality that God has given us strength during the time of our weakness. And so, he teaches us that people who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength that they shall mount up with wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary and ultimately he tells us they shall walk and not faint can you imagine or picture a person growing wings like an eagle and soaring in the Lord so, uh, with strength and rather than using their own strength they go the whole distance while other people are dropping like flies on every side and I'm here today to tell you that's your testimony the fact that you keep going and the fact that you made it up until this point while everybody else is throwing in a towel is a sign that you got something different on the inside of you and so no matter what you're going through I'm trying to stay calm today and no matter what you're facing you just point it at somebody and tell them you must wait on the Lord and you must trust him for strength to conquer all your life challenges and, and circumstances and fears and so just look at somebody and say don't you know haven't you heard the Lord wants you to understand that there is no lack of strength in him you may not have much of a prayer life but the Lord says has thou not known and has thou not heard in other words you should have known that the Lord will take care of you come on look at somebody else and say you should have known that the Lord was going to take care of you should have known that he was going to let your money stretch to pay your bill you should have known that he was going to keep you when you should have lost your nasty mind but God kept I'm feel something in today but God kept you look down your row and tell your neighbor God kept me in the midst of what I went through I, I should have lost it all I should have re retaliated I should have responded but somehow or another God reminded me has thou not known has thou not heard here it is that power belongs to God look at somebody and tell them power belongs to God and so the Bible says the everlasting God come on shout that thing and say everlasting God the creator of the universe he's powerful he has brought us through many dangerous toils let me let me tell Tap and do what my grandma used to say. He brought me through dangers, uh, seen and unseen, tolls and snares. And so don't let Satan deceive you in thinking that it was merely luck, a coincidence that you were delivered. Come on, tell somebody I was delivered because I had to see the goodness of the Lord. That's why David said, Jason, my foot would have slipped if I hadn't have seen. Come on, you were right in the midst of a trial. You were in the midst of a bad situation. You were embarrassed. It was public. It didn't look good. And your foot would have slipped you would have cussed you would have fought but your foot would have come on tell somebody it would have but I stood my ground it would have but I stood on the solid rock it would have but God kept my feet it would have but I kept my mouth closed in this season I had to shut up and I just had to take it tell your neighbor in this season shut up and hast thou not known hast thou not heard that power belongs to God Come on, open up your mouth and say, you must remember what God has done for you. If you can't seem to remember thing, anything he's done for you personally, then look around in others and who you've seen blessed and delivered out of situations that were worse than yours. Look and see what God did for them and tell yourself, if he can do it for them, then I know he can do it for me. And so God's divine love, that's enough right there to make you want to run, let if you trail and shout, that he loved me when I couldn't love myself. 
As a matter of fact, I only know love because he loved me first. And so he, he, he had power to bring me through and he, he will do the same for you. Don't you know? Haven't you heard that God has all the strength that's necessary to escalate and to motivate and move you up and out of your circumstance because he's the master of all situations? Don't you know? Haven't you heard that there's nothing too hard? There's nothing impossible for God? What makes you think your circumstance is beyond the Lord's ability? What caused you to believe that you can't get up? Just look at somebody and say, you can get up again. When God is already willing to help you get back on your feet when you've fallen, don't you know? Haven't you heard that God can give you victory? That everyone who puts their trust in God will overcome because there's no limit to God's resources? Uh, that's a shout right there. There's, there's, there's a thing that you must realize that he's omnipotent. That means he's all-powerful. If you're hungry, he has cattle on a thousand hills. If you need land, he owns the land that the cattle eat from. If the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And if you're thirsty, he'll give you water from a stream of living water. He said, the water that I give, you will thirst no more. Don't you know, haven't you heard that God has his eyes on a sparrow and if he's concerned about a sparrow then you ought to touch those seven and say he's concerned about me. So to the point, Felicia, that he knows the number of hairs on my head. I know you look at it and say, he don't have any hair. That's because you ain't around me enough. But if you sat there and watched me not go to the barber shop and get a shave uh, throughout the week, you would see hair growing in place you didn't think it could grow in because he knows the number of hairs on my head. I know you know I'm right, Tim. I know. You can be assured that the Lord knows the way that you need to take in times of trouble. So when you take it, even as great, you'll come out pure as gold. Come on, tell somebody. I, I was a little dusty, so I had to go through the refining fire and so God wants to show you even more your desire to know that he's able to save the uttermost I wish I had some folk in here that can remind them that to remind yourself that you were messed up you you were high you were drunk you were you, you see sometimes we get in the church and we forget after 20 and 30 years what God has done for us but somebody you need to remind yourself as I look back over my life and that I think things over I remember when I was a junkie I remember when I was high as a kite I was so high I would have killed an elephant but God kept me in the midst of my hotness he kept me in the midst of my deliverance is there anybody here that can shout he is a keeper don't you know haven't you heard that God is strong and powerful and he cannot fail you ought to just tell somebody across the room and look at him and say he cannot fail don't you know haven't you heard that God is not only powerful but he's the almighty one don't you know haven't you heard that the Lord is well able to perform whatever he has spoken the fact that he said it he's going to settle it I don't know who needs to hear this but God says he's about to blow up in your life in this month before you hit September 1 next week God's about to do something and change your whole life around he's going to visit you in an area of your life that you thought you were lacking in but God's about to show up. look at somebody and say God is about to show up in your life and so we must learn to depend on the Lord come on that's the first point tell somebody we must learn to depend on the Lord uh, we need to learn and depend on the Lord and so that for many Christians you go through life as born again citizens of the kingdom and still live defeated and unfulfilled lives really having no purpose and having no meaning but I want you to know that you better remind yourself these words today don't you know uh, haven't you heard that the Lord wants us to lean on him tell somebody you need to lean on him and some believers refuse to take advice and cannot, uh, cannot, 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 I need my monitors up. I uh, cannot. Some Christians refuse to take advice and can't be told anything. Some Christians may like the pastor's preaching and may even give generously to the church, but when it comes down to letting God alter their snug and, and, and uncomfortable uh, lifestyle, they balk and freeze up. Some Christians prefer to lean on their own knowledge and, and subconsciously thinking and believe that they are smarter than God. They, they, they have this master plan already worked out, but many of them so-called believers are rebellious against the word of God which clearly says in the word of God Proverbs 3 5 very familiar passage of scripture what does it say trust in the Lord what with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding in all thy ways do what acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path Proverbs 14 and 12 says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are what the ways of death and so you must understand and instead of traveling the road of destruction you can take the righteous alternative path which is the counsel of God if you want to be victorious in all your endeavors don't lean on your own understanding or to your own device instead my brothers and sisters you should acknowledge the Lord He's going to direct your path. Come on, say, don't you know? 
haven't you heard that if you seek the word of God about everything that concerns you, you'll be like the great warrior Joshua. It was Joshua that was with Moses that saw that he was going to the promised land, but it was Moses that died before getting there. It's not good enough for me to see it. I got to be in it. Come on. Some of y'all content with just seeing where you're going. Uh, that ain't enough for me. I don't just want to see where I'm going, but I want to walk and live in it. I, I, I refuse to see where God is going to take me and die before I get it. There's something inside of me that says I'm going to live to see it happen. I wish you prophesy to somebody and tell them you don't live to see this thing happen. You don't see this thing work out for your good. And we know Melody that all things work together for good. I know right now it seems bad. I know right now you may beating yourself up but the reality of it is it's working for your good. I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not the evil and to do what? Bring you to an expected end because you have a what? A hope and a future. You must understand in this season in order to be successful you must have the right attitude. And you got to have the right habit of inquiring of the Lord and he'll never fail you. You just missed it. You got to have the right attitude and you have to inquire of the Lord. The Bible says that when David got back to Ziglag, he had to figure out if he was going to pursue. And so instead of him pursuing Felicia, the Bible says that David did what? He inquired of the Lord. The Bible says sometimes you have to be by yourself, Sister Tracy, and you got to strengthen yourself. Come on. Anybody know what I mean? Sometimes you got to lay your hands on yourself. You can't call daddy. You can't call mama. You can't call the preacher. You can't call the counselor you can't call your friend because watch this sometimes you want the right information you don't want people always siding with you you don't want people just sitting there with you. sometimes you want people to tell you something that you don't even want to hear yourself anybody know what i'm talking about sometimes you need a word that's going to trigger something inside of you that's been dormant you don't need a word that's going to pity pat your party you don't need a word that's going to keep you comfortable you need a word that's going to tell you get up out your sad state get up out your dilemma and get up and live come on tell somebody get up and live You've been in Lobodor long enough. You've been down and out long enough. Get up and go to the king's table. Because I just believe in this season, not only will you have a seat at the table, but he's going to make you head. Oh. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you want to just wave your right hand and say, I speak promotion all over my life. I know it looks bad right now, but God is setting you up to lead this thing. Is there anybody here that can shout, promotion is coming my way? So events great. The Bible says that David says, shall I pursue? Uh, Evans Sprague is in this season. We have to start inquiring of the Lord. Sometimes God just wants you to be silent. What do you do when God tells you to shut up? What do you do when God tells you not to respond? You better do just that. It may not feel good. It may hurt. It may look bad. But haven't you heard the word? Don't you know? Haven't you heard that power belongs to God? Look down your own and tell your neighbor power belongs to God. I got stuff in my record that I can pull out and slay everybody. But I, I'm not the slayer. Though he slay me, yet will I. Tell your neighbor God is the chief slayer. So when you want to be petty, shut your mouth. And let God slay them. Though he slay me, Joseph said what yet will I God knows all of our number come on touch your head and say Lord help me to develop the right attitude help me to develop a habit of inquiring of you quit doing stuff on your own quit doing things by yourself seek the Lord so he can lead and guide you that's why the Bible says in Matthew 6 33 seek ye first what the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then what all these other things will be added unto you turn from your wicked ways acknowledge the Lord he's going to direct your path my second point is the Lord's going to renew your strength. I wish somebody just would look at somebody and say, he's, I don't care what you're going through. Tell, Ooh, I, shanti, I, not, I, see. I don't care what you're going through, Grady. God's going to renew your strength. I don't care how them daughters may not be doing what you deposited in. God's going to renew your strength. I don't care how it looks indifferent to what you've been dealing with. I don't care what Bruce may be dealing with right now. God's going to renew your strength. And guess what? He's going to renew the children's strength. Is there anybody here that know that power belongs to God? Rhonda, I know it looks bad right now. I know that every time you find yourself looking is a bad call. But in this season, you must understand, if he lets me go through it, that's just enough to give him praise. Because I'm going to go through it, praise. Is there anybody in here that know that praise is your weapon and is your, your walk of victory? Is there anybody in here that know in this season he's going to give you strength? You, you may feel like you're losing strength. Uh, and watch this. Here's the deal. Even when you start, watch this, Jocelyn, losing strength, you must understand, even when you feel like you're fainting 
You've got to stand firm to know that he's renewing your strength. I know it looks bad. I've been there. I've done that. Let me tell you. Don't, don't let me bend up here fool you. Some days I didn't even want to come here dealing with y'all. But in this season, you must understand that God has power to renew your strength. Okay, here it is. Look at somebody say, he's going to give you a second win. Now you just missed it. Not only is he going to give you a second wind of breathing, but he's going to give you that second chance wind. Is there anybody in here that know it's not over? When you feel like you're about to stagger and clinch, you're dealing with sin, you're dealing with lust, strife, God declares, I'm going to give you power to not faint. You just missed it. The testimony of Evans Grady is, I'm going to give power to the faint. And them that have no might, I'm going to do what? Increase strength. So God says it's just a good time for a setup to reverse what they think is going to happen in your life. The Lord said, I'm going to give power to the person who's standing strong. He said, I'm going to give power not to the person who's standing strong, but to the one who is swaying wobbly on their knees. I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to give power to the faint. Those that have no mind, I will do what? Increase strength. The Lord says, if you look inside yourself and cannot muster the strength to get up, God says he's going to give you the increase of strength. God will not only raise you up, but watch this. He will give you enough power to pull yourself up if you stumble again. He won't help you so you can be handicapped the rest of your life. Hear me? He know he's good. He gives you power uh, to the faint. gives power to the faint. And those who are weak, he increases strength. So if you're weak and you have no willpower, you have no strength, you have no ability within yourself to resist the enemy, when your body gets tired, do I have anybody in here that can say, sometimes my body gets tired? Remember what God says, he's going to give you strength. When Satan begins to attack your flesh, remember the power of God residing in you, your innermost being. Remember that God does not faint, nor does he grow weary. In fact, the Lord does not even sleep. And so since God doesn't sleep, you need to be sleeping. If there's no sense if you've been weary, watch this, about how you're going to fix the problem. But in this season, you must understand that God neither sleeps, neither does he slumber, and he's working on your behalf. I wish you testify to somebody and say, since he don't sleep, you need to sleep. Since, since he's working in your situation, you don't need to try to fix it. In this season, I pronounce over this house and those that's watching, God says rest in your situation. Come on. There is a rest that remains for the people of God. There is a rest that God wants to give you in this season. There is a rest that you must be settled in that God's going to do it. You just sometimes got to remind yourself, I know it don't seem right. I know it don't feel right. But Rita, God's going to do it for me. Is there anybody here that can touch yourself and say, God's going to do it for me? Your strength will suddenly be renewed. Yeah. Your joy will be restored. Yeah. Your, your power will return. Yeah. And you will experience the life that God has given you to walk in victory. Here's my last point. You must learn to wait on the Lord. Come on, tell somebody, if, if God don't do it, it won't be done. So he says, don't you know, haven't you heard that we need to wait on the Lord? The Lord says, if you wait on me, I'll renew your strength. The Lord says, if you wait on me, everything will be all right. The Lord says, you may be hurting right now, but be patient. Wait on me. Help is on the way. Come on, look at somebody and say, uh, help is on the way. That, that's your 911 call. He that dwells in the secret place, uh, Psalm 91 and 1, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you cry out, help me, Lord, I fall and I can't get the Holy Spirit saying, I'm here to help you in the midst of, of your storm. You know what God just said to me last night? He said, just tell the church to hold on just a little while longer. I just wish you touched. I know we're dealing with still post-COVID, but can you just touch the person that you came here with and say, hold on, wait a, just a little while longer. Wait a little while longer. Okay, here it is. Your aid is coming your way. Okay, you, you do understand as a former police officer, when I was a cop, there were radio buttons that was on our uh, radio to, to, to watch this give a commission to letting the dispatcher know that I need help. So when I can't muster up a word, I got a button that I can push. Oh, you just missed it. Anybody here know what it means? You go through stuff, you can't even muster up the words in English. You got something in the Holy Ghost that you can, mm, I'm talking about some folk that here you know you're going through some stuff and the Holy Ghost down inside of you make you say groans and utterings that you can't even say in English. And, and God says, I pick up. That's the aid call button. Tell somebody, I got an aid call button. See, see when I was a cop, and I couldn't get on the radio, Lady K, I could push a button. And she'll call my number back, and I'll try to push the button back to muster up the word and say, Dispatcher, 
I'm chasing somebody. Dispatcher shots fire. And then all of a sudden, every cop in the city of St. Louis will stop what they're doing to get to my location. I stopped by to let you know you have access with God. And since you have access with God, you got peace with God. Come in Romans chapter 5. And we know that we have peace with God. And since we have peace with God, God will help us go through our tribulations. Because you got access to call on the name of Jesus. Is there anybody in here that can open up your mouth and call Jesus? Things begin to happen when I call the name. She say, 426, do you need help? And I can't muster up the way I want to. All I have to do is shout yes. And all of a sudden, attention all cars, officer in need of aid. At 1806 Cass, right at 20th Street. And all of a sudden, if I can just hold on just a little while longer, I start hearing sirens come from everywhere. And then all of a sudden, my sergeant get up on say, 412 responding. 427 responding. 421 responding. 423 responding. 5th District start responding. 401 is coming. My command is on the way. Then all of a sudden, you hear the chief of police say, Cruiser 1, I'm in route. Is there anybody here that know that when you call on the name Jesus, things begin to happen? Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, when I call on the name of Jesus, things begin to happen because he's coming to deliver. He's coming to set you free. God's going to bring you out. God's going to deliver you. He's going to renew your strength. Just tell your neighbor, hold on just a little while longer. Change is coming. You remember the story of Samson? I don't believe he committed suicide because he wouldn't be listed in Hebrews. I'm here today to tell you he was reduced from a great warrior, brought down to a lowly servant, doing the work of a woman. Read your history for yourself. They blinded his eyes, put him in jail. He started grinding corn. But there's one thing they forgot about. And I speak over you right now, Mosey. God's going to give you a how be it. How be it denotes that what you went through before you came in is not going to be the same when you go out. Look down your road and say, you're going to walk in your how be it season. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, how be it the hair on Samson's head begin to grow back. Is there anybody here? that know that growth means new I stopped by to prophesy to 10 of y'all that God's going to give you new again God's going to restore again I know it was embarrassing I know it was public display but in this season power belongs to God look down your row and tell your neighbor that in this season you must understand that power belongs to God I'm speaking of how be it over your life how be it your attitude gonna change how be it your home life gonna change is there anybody here that can say I've fallen but I can't give up I'm falling but I'm waiting on the Lord if you don't deliver me God if you don't help me God I'll die without ever being redeemed. But Lord, I need you to give me my honor back. All creation, get ready. He's given us our honor back. He's given us our name back. Eastern Missouri first, get ready. He's given us our power back. He's given us our name back. Church of God in Christ. I know they talked about us, but they forgot when we helped them. Church of God in Christ. I know they scandalizing the name, but they forgot when we gave them bunk beds. Church of God in Christ. I know they saying this. I know they're saying that. But Dominique God will elevate you in the midst of your enemies. Now why you asking for a place at the table? God says I'm not going to give you just a place. But I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. Above only and not the beneath. Get ready for your building. You help everybody else. But God says in this season you got next somebody point to gray and tell them you got next now point to somebody else and tell them you got next I know the bills are high I know you got more bills than you got money but keep on doing what you've been doing 
don't you know haven't you heard you gonna grow again you going higher again if he don't help me it won't happen I heard the Bible say but they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength sometimes you may not be able to explain it you may not be able to prove it but you know you're waiting on the Lord for something to happen in your life Mosey I know it feels bad I know it don't feel good you used to run it you used to move it but the devil is a liar that I just decree and declare over you that the worst is over somebody point to him and say better days they lie ahead and I speak over you sir that you will live and not die God ain't through with you yet he that's begun the good work in you sir is able to perform it better days lie ahead so be not weary in your well doing but you shall reap if you faint not tell your neighbor summer it's been hot winter it's been cold trip back in the fall sprung forward in the spring but there's one season you forgot it's my due season and payday is coming after a while we've been in long enough but I decree and declare you've been putting in long hours I decree and declare you've been sweating by the chinny chin chin you've been sweating by your bra but I decree and declare as a prophet of this house I decree and declare as the bishop of this house I decree and declare in the apostolic fear that your better days lie ahead is there anybody here that can wave your hand and say better is coming my way better is coming my way wait on the Lord and be of good cheer and he shall strengthen thy heart and again I say wait tell your neighbor you got to wait on the Lord because when you wait on the Lord you gonna see his mercies endure it forever tell your neighbor wait on the Lord because when you wait you gonna mount up when you wait he gonna cause your wings to stretch out and you gonna mount up with wings like an eagle if you wait on the Lord he will take you above the storm cloud tell your neighbor he gonna take you above the storm cloud if you wait on the Lord you must understand that the eagle does not fly in the middle of the storm it flies above the storm spreading its wings wide the eagle uses the wind that's blowing against its wings to take it higher so what are you saying through trail when they try to talk about you take what they say spread your wings and go higher take what they do spread your wings and go higher you know what you did you got a record of what you done but when you do good you keep no record of what you've done because if they reap I'm sorry if they sow the wind the Bible says they gonna reap the whirlwind don't you worry about what they say don't you worry about what they do don't you worry about how they hate your feelings or hurt your feelings you got to know power belongs to God tell your neighbor you better let the wind blow tell them say you better let the wind blow and you better stretch out on God's word the same wind that's trying to take you under will be the same wind that will hold you and take you to the glory is there anybody here that you can say the same wind that tried to take you down 
it's going to be the same wind that's going to take you higher. If you want to walk and not faint, you must first come to the Lord wholeheartedly. Humble yourself and tell the Lord, I'm not able to do it alone. Where you, you gonna tell him, open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm not able to do this by myself. But I need you to take me by the hand and lead me on. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, I tried to do it by myself. But I can't get the victory. Somebody need to tell him I've fallen and I can't get up like I want to. I fell on the ground of adversity. I fell on the ground of defeat. But I just can't get up. But let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with the Father. Look at somebody and say, you must know your identity and that heaven has your back. Any, any, okay, y'all don't want to be real because y'all sitting here looking. Anybody in here know that your flesh want to get back? If that's you, jump on your feet and say, that's me. My, my flesh want to retaliate. <laughs> okay. Come on, sit back down. If you got records of using stuff against people, stand to your feet. Come on, just... Come on, tell us. Yeah, I don't want to be real. Come on, tell somebody. I got proof. I got proof. I got proof. I got proof. Come on. Come on, just tell somebody. I got the proof. I got the proof. And I got it. But the law won't let me use it. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. Look down your own. Say, the Lord just won't let me be petty. Woo, I feel like running. Rhonda. He, he just won't let me get back. He won't let me respond. He, he won't let me post what I really want to post. He won't let me go knock on the door and say what I really want to say. Why? Because he said what? Power belongs to who? Me. I, I know, y'all seriously, I know, I know it's a public display. Grady, I know. I know. Grady, I know. Kids ain't acting right. I know. Seem like they dumb. May, may, maybe that's just mine. Maybe my, the, the, older, the older some of my kids get, the dumber they seem to be making the wrong decision. Oh, maybe your kids ain't dumb. Maybe it's your boyfriend. He keep messing with you. She keep messing with you. Maybe it ain't your boyfriend, girlfriend. Maybe it's your husband and wife. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your mom and daddy. Maybe it's your brother and sister. I don't know what it is. But in this season, you must understand it's a setup. Yeah. Just, come on, look, look at somebody and say, what you're dealing with is nothing but a setup for the enemy's failure. You, you, you want to admit that sometimes your flesh don't want to cooperate with God? Ooh, y'all don't want to hear that. Ooh. You know how to say the right thing, but you still can't get back up. So you must just at that point say, Lord, save me. You must say, Lord, help me. You, you, God says he's putting you in situations where you got to cry out to him. I've been in situations where I was pretending to be strong but I really was weak and then I read over in the scripture that when I'm weak therefore he is strong and he manifests strength inside of me even in my weakness because in this season God is trying to show you his power not yours come on tell somebody I pretended to be strong long enough you know what the Lord said he said in this season 
He said, I'm giving you the ability to not only get back up, but I'm giving you the ability to have the will to fight again. You know what he said? He said, tell my people they got to repent. That what you've allowed things to happen in your life. And you must tell them that you want to be delivered from some things. And, and, that, and that you must tell the Lord, we need the Holy Ghost to work in my life again. We, that's what God says. He said, tell the people that you need to acknowledge this. He said, this is what the church has forgotten. You haven't appropriated the blood over every area of your life. Whenever you make a decision, Lord, I appropriate the blood. I plead the blood. You do understand that's what the older saints did. They, 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 they may have been whatever, but them folk knew how to plead the blood, and they knew how to get some breakthrough in the folks. So you must tell the Lord, Lord, I need your Holy Ghost to lead and guide me. Here it is. When your situations get desperate and grave, you need to run to the Lord like you've never run before and say, Lord, I'm on the verge of destruction. If you don't help me, the enemy is going to defeat me. Help me, Lord Jesus. If you follow, don't you know that the Holy Spirit is calling you? God says to the church, put away your excuses. Put away your complaining. God is calling you. Give him all your troubles and allow him to renew your strength. In this season, you must know he wants to release you. God says, don't let the enemy bound you up any longer. The Lord is not, will not renew your strength until you're willing to throw away everything on the altar without restrictions or reservations. When you give him all of you, he will give you all of him. When you make this decision, God will enable you to mount up with wings and soar with the mighty wind of the spirit and he will pick you up. I want to end with the cross. Don't you know, have you heard how the Roman soldiers led Jesus to God, God the hill, placed him on the cross? How they mocked him, spit in his face, pulled his beard, placed a crown of thorns on his head, gave him gall mixed with vinegar when he was a thirst, nailed spikes, not nails in his hands, but spikes in his wrist and in his feet, pierced him inside, laid him down in Joseph's borrowed tomb. But early on the third day morning, just before the break of day, the Bible says he rose with all power in his hands. And I stopped by to let you know, my brothers and sisters, he had redeeming power, he had saving power, and he ultimately had the Holy Ghost power. And the Bible says that same Holy Ghost that quickened Jesus will quicken your mortal bodies. And I just believe today you have a right to come. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, I ask that you would give him a chance. Try Jesus. You tried everything else. You tried dating. You tried connecting. You tried so many other things. And here at this church, we want you to know there's 10 top dependables. We want you to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We want you to know from these top dependables, those of you just watching the screen, you sit on the screen. Number one, God still loves you. Number one, God still loves you. Number two, the Bible is still true. Number three, God will hear prayer. Number four, the church, the Holy Spirit still seeks the lost. Number five, the church will go on with or without you. Number six, God will bless the preaching of his word. Number seven, the Holy Spirit will not leave you. Number eight, God knows your problems. Number nine and ten, it goes together. There's still room at the cross for you. And also number ten, Jesus still saves. My brothers and sisters, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal savior, would you do it right now? Don't delay, don't put it off. If you would like to receive Christ by faith, pray this simple prayer, everybody in your heart. Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I believe Jesus died for my sins on the cross and he rose again on the third day. I repent of my sins and by faith I receive the Lord. You promised to save me and I believe you. Because you're God and cannot lie. I believe right now that the Lord Jesus is my personal savior and that all my sins are forgiven through his precious blood. I thank you, dear Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, we say yes and it is so. If you prayed that prayer, we want you to know that God heard you and that God saved you. And I personally want to welcome you to the family of God and we rejoice with you. I want you to connect with us here at this time on Sundays at uh, 1045 as well as Wednesdays at uh, uh, 7 o'clock. 
We also have morning prayer Tuesdays and Fridays here at 10 a.m. And we want you to connect with us even in Sunday school and Wednesday night in life study. We want you to connect with us. Write us at 1442 Hudson Road, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. You can email us at acnhfc at gmail.com. We want to send you information about what just occurred in your life. You got saved and we want you to be connected with a biblically based church. And because you're watching us here and you're here now, we want you to join us and cause you to grow in God. We want you to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on, let's praise God for the hundreds and thousands of people that will listen to this and receive Christ by faith. If you prayed that prayer and you're here, we want to connect with you. Is there anyone that says, Pastor, I need prayer. I need you to stand with me in prayer. We have enough time. Uh, if you want to be prayed for, come real quickly to the altar. We want to pray with you. It won't be long. We want to pray with you. We want to lay hands on you that God would do just that. Okay, everybody stand to your feet. And where you stand, you make it be the altar. Lay hands on somebody and just say, Lord, touch. Lord, deliver. Lord, set feet. Father, in Jesus' name, I've given these people your word. And now we give it back to you that you would do the work. God, I've planted it. Somebody's going to come and water it, but you're going to get the increase. God, I thank you for these, your people now, that you will strengthen our church, add to the church that such should be saved. Those that's dealing with issues and situations that didn't want to come up, God, you know them and you know what they're going to. And so, God, as we lay hands on and touch and agree, we send the word like the centurion said, just send the word. And we know my servant will be made whole. God, we send the word and we know your people will be delivered and set free in the name of Jesus Christ we only know love because you loved us first oh God touch the heartache touch the hurt touch the pain turn it around now in the name of Jesus bring peace to the situation God in the name of Jesus I pray for finances I pray for overflow I pray for increase now as we're touching and agreeing God do it again touch our children that are not here save and deliver and set free in the name of Jesus we bind cancer we bind diabetes we bind depression God I bind mental illness that will cause depression now in the neck turn it around God heal the broken heart God in the name of Jesus and we say yes to your will we say yes to your way oh be the groans of these your little ones God bless all creation every church that's represented here be oh God great unto us and we thank you for it, God we thank you that what was is no longer these people that are watching and those that will watch later on whatever format they're watching God we send your word the same power that's here is the same anointing that's there in Jesus name we pray the people of the Lord said yes and it is so come on if you believe God for this word don't you know haven't you heard clap your hands and give with God praise come on everybody clap your hands and give God praise now shout glory in this place